Books, books, books. You know, I'm a bit crazy about books. In last year's video, I talked about my 10 favorite books on brand strategy. And this year, I want to redo that because my preference in books and the types of books I've been reading on brand strategy have, has changed a lot. There is a lot more focus now on science, marketing science, effectiveness, how brands actually grow versus my first video was a lot of books on traditional brand differentiation, um, defining the brand and so on. And while those are still really interesting books to read, I think these books are really important because they teach you about the fundamentals of how a brand actually work. And that is, of course, important if we are doing brand strategy, right? So the first book is How Brands Grow. In this case, it's how Brands Grow 2, I'm holding in my hands, but I would recommend reading How Brands Grow 1. You can also, of course, read the follow-up part, which is interesting. And I want to talk about, uh, I want to read like a quote from each book that really like sums up a bit of like what this book is really about. And so I'm going to read a little part. Having one clear path to growth need not stifle creativity in marketing. Engineers build aeroplanes in different ways, but all methods draw on the same scientific evidence as to which materials to use and all aeroplane designers must work with the laws of motion and gravity. So How Brands Grow is a book that talks about some of the most fundamental laws in marketing and science and so how brands grow. He talks about, Byron Sharp is the author by the way, Byron Sharp talks about brand loyalty not being such an important thing to focus on because it's actually not that big of a deal. Meaningful differentiation, so the things I focused on a lot in my last books, appears to be less important for brand growth than is physical availability and mental availability. I've created plenty of content about this because it's a really important part of brand strategy. So check out some of the links in the description below if you want to learn more about this idea of physical availability, mental availability. But how brands grow is like a game changer. So start with that. Another book that's really interesting, a great follow-up. It's like it's called the, the unofficial sequel, I think, to, to uh, How Brands Grow is Eat Your Greens by uh, Wiemer Sneders. It's a great book because, to be honest, after like reading How Brands Grow, it can be a bit like painful because all of the things you've learned about differentiation and so on appear to be not so true. So what is left? Like what is left after the dust settles from this this like this mountain of a book? And I think that's why Eat Your Greens is a really good book to follow up on because it builds on the principles of how brands grow, but it, it gives you some more like applicable things to learn, to, to, to use, how to think about them in marketing. And it's like, there are so many different authors in here that are really great. So it's not one author, it's actually like people like Mark Ritson, Tom Goodwin, Byron Sharp himself, and other really important thought leaders that give their thoughts or their opinion on, on like, Wow, how brands grow, how we can do effective marketing and advertising and a lot more. So Eat Your Greens by Wimir Schneider, an absolute um, um, recommendation. So let me read a small piece from this book. Uh, let me just look where it is. Give me a great product, sold through omnichannel in the right way at the optimum price and it's going to be okay. So what um, I think this is a piece by... Um, Mark Ritson, where he talks about the fact that if we look at the four P's from marketing, we tend to all think that marketing is only promotion, which is just one part of it. So he says, like, if you have a great product with a great price distributed in the right way, you might have a better chance at, at having a successful company than focusing on promotion. And I think this is a painful truth for a lot of people in marketing, but also in branding. We tend to think branding and all and marketing is only about active communication, but really understanding distribution price is such an important part of brand strategy as well. So I think we tend to oversee these traditional things, but they are important. Book number three is um, 
Uh, oh, sorry. Thinking fast and slow. I was thinking a bit slow right there. <laughs> but um, this is a really interesting book. And it's not so much about marketing science. It's really about behavioral science. It's about how we think. And uh, Daniel Kahneman, the, the author of this, is I think he even won a Nobel Prize. I'm not sure. I think so. Wow. I should have verified that before saying it. But this is really about system one and system two thinking, which is a really interesting thing when it comes to buying behavior. Like how do we actually buy a product or a service? A lot of it has to do with how we make decisions. And so uh, Daniel Kahneman was really important, instrumental in creating science around how we think. And so I'm going to read uh, a small piece of this. So. Whenever you are conscious, and perhaps even when you are not, multiple computations are going on in your brain, which maintain and update current answers to some questions. Is anything new going on? Is there a threat? Are things going well? Should my attention be redirected? Is more effort needed for this task? You can think of it as a cockpit, with a set of dials that indicate the current values of each of these essential variables. The assessments are carried out automatically by system one and one of their functions is to determine whether extra effort is required from system two. So a lot of our thinking happens automatically. There is this autopilot that makes a lot of really important assessments. One of them is which brands we should buy, which products we should buy. And so while we think that brands should be really different and on, we think about it on a rational level most of the buying is done unconsciously and so this is really important to understand what biases we have okay so another book in that same realm that's really interesting is decoded by phil barden so another great book with a lot of like um, interesting visuals it's a lot more practical than Daniel Kahneman's which was a bit more dense on the scientific side this is more like um, a branding practitioners look at that behavioral science at that neuroscience and so it's a really interesting book with a lot of great visualizations you know um, I've probably talked about this, the Tropicana example where like packaging went wrong. And this book is really interesting when it comes to branding, like understanding that a lot of branding is about subconscious or unconscious decision making. And so that we have to think about that as much as we do about the rational decisions or even more. Let me just look for that small piece to read to you. The brain learns through countless situations in which light and top appear together, that those two signals are coupled. So in our associative memory, there is a link between light and top. Put differently, top turns into code for light. In marketing, we can borrow this memory when signaling the lightness of biscuits, integral to a consumer goal of healthiness or dieting. So what he's referring to actually is this 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 visual here where you have um, some cookies that are on top of the typography or below the typography. And so the positioning of those cookies, the layout of those of those cookies really matters a lot of, of what you're signaling on an unconscious level. So it doesn't matter what you put there in the words. On the first level, we're going to analyze this purely based on, for example, visual cues such as the layout. So this is a really interesting book for designers, but also for marketers, because it go, it's really about like how are we communicating the right signals that will then be picked up by our system one and that will like highlight our system two, like, hey, this is something you need to look out for. While a lot of the things we create, I think we tend to start with like, how can we get the attention of system two with, with ignoring system one? So decode it. The Science Behind Why We Buy by Phil Barn. Great book. Blazing through here. Um, another amazing book, Building Distinctive Brand Assets by uh, Jenny Romanyuk. So I've had Jenny on the podcast. Let me just make some room. Um, a great book because it's really, it builds again on, on the principles of how brands grow. So like... What is important if it's not meaningful differentiation? Well, Jenny Romanyuk makes the point that it's about distinctiveness and distinctiveness is brands being recognized 
for who they are in in a certain category so distinctiveness is knowing what you look like what makes you special and these are actually distinctive brand assets so that might be a logo a tagline typography colors all these things are distinctive assets and so these are one of the key aspects of branding is understanding what these assets are and how you can play them out in advertising in marketing so again a really important book for branding and marketing and the relation between those two let me find our little snippet here so yeah actually this is more of a visual thing so it says like there is three important aspects of branding it's ownership it's anchoring and it's bridging and i think this is really important of course first you have to show that that product belongs to you to your business but it's also about anchoring so you're anchoring certain like like associations and then of course it's a bridge it's a bridge between different marketing activities so if you have a let's say a campaign that goes online and offline of course these distinctive assets branding is what makes them recognizable across all these channels and so that's why it's so interesting to think about uh, sound assets and other distinctive assets because if you have all these assets and they are associated with your brand and what you are doing you can really be branding on different levels and it can still be recognizable, which is really important. So distinctive brand assets, amazing book. Another really interesting book, a really essential book is a uh, good strategy, bad strategy by Richard Rommel. I should have read this probably uh, before anything else because it's such an instrumental book on just what strategy means in general because that's also important of course if we want to work on brand strategy is knowing what strategy is about and so there is a, a main a main uh, idea behind this book and I'll, I'll read that to you so the kernel of a strategy contains three elements a diagnosis that defines or explains the nature of the challenge a good diagnosis simplifies the often overwhelming complexity of reality by identifying certain aspects of the situation as critical. A guiding policy for dealing with the challenge. This is an overall approach chosen to cope with or overcome the obstacles identified in the diagnosis. And then a set of coherent actions that are designed to carry out the guiding policy. These are steps that are coordinated with one another to work together in accomplishing the guiding policy. So these three things, a diagnosis, a guiding policy, and a set of coherent actions are what strategy is about. And if you know this, then you can start thinking about what that means for brand strategy, of course. We need to diagnose the problem. We need to have a guiding policy. We need to know what to do when a certain crisis come up because we have a guiding policy and of course we need a set of coherent actions to bring that strategy to life so good strategy bad strategy another really interesting book here the halo effect and the eight other business delusions that deceive managers it's quite the title but it's a really interesting book because when it comes to brand strategy it's really a translation of business strategy into branding and marketing but we first need to understand what drives performance for companies. And I think we tend to misinterpret. And again, that's what, for example, how brands grow and eat your greens, these books are looking at. If you look at the science, it, it's not differentiation, for example, that makes brands grow. It's physical and mental availability. So the drivers of performance are often misunderstood. And this book is about that. It's about understanding why certain companies when they are performing well tend to like get attributes for different um, qualities for example if a company is financially really successful people might start saying well it's because they have a great brand strategy or because they have a great design and usually it's uh, actually a lot of different factors it's a complex story and i think that's really important when you're thinking about brand strategy is that you do not like 
tend to overvalue brand strategy versus other things such as business strategy, uh, customer relationship, experience, all that stuff is important. And so this is a really good book to give you some insights into what actually makes a company perform and what might be just like self, self-fulfilling um, prophecies. Really interesting. I think we're, let me count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so this is book number eight. Um, Alchemy, the surprising power of ideas that don't make sense. Very shiny book by Rory Sutherland, who is like, um, he's the vice chairman um, at Ogilvy. And so he's been around for a while and really understands advertising and branding and so on. And it's a really interesting book, especially if you look at the the pile of books I've been talking about so far. A lot of them are quite heavy on the science. And it's interesting to me that this book, while it's not like unscientific in any way, it tends to also show us that a lot of things don't make sense from a purely number statement, but that they do make sense when it comes to humans because we are, as, as said before, we are psychological beings that, that maybe do a lot of things unconsciously. And so we're not rational economic beings that, that just analyze everything perfectly. And so it's a good breakthrough book if you're, if you're maybe stuck in too much scientific anal- analysis. And so let me, let me read a small piece. The first lens is market research or to give it a simpler name, asking people. However, the problem with it is that if we remember David Ogilvy's words, the trouble with market research is that people don't think what they feel, they don't say what they think, and they don't do what they say. People simply do not have introspective access to their motivations. So, like, This is super important because a lot of market research asks people what they think and they tend to then predict behavior based on that. But it's not that easy. And I think this book really dives deep into things that don't always make sense, but do make sense from a human perspective. And it's backed up by a lot of things such as, for example, evolutionary theory by Darwin and a lot of other things. So a great um, segue. Small book here, Delusions of Brandeur by um, Ryan Wallman, who's going to be on the podcast soon. It's a really funny book. Like It's also really cool in terms of design. There's a lot of like wild stuff going on. And this is more like uh, if you want the, 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 like, the funny, ironical approach to what's been said in how brands grow, for example, this is really good because it takes a bit of a laugh with... A lot of the Gary V thinking that's out there that's really cliche and, and highly untruth in a lot of cases. So it's a really fun book if you want like to see what some of the cliches are in our industry. Let me read a small small piece. So will they change the fundamental principles of good marketing? In my opinion, no. After all, marketing is ultimately dependent on human behavior and while the technologies will change, People won't. As the legendary advertising man Bill Bernbach once said, it took millions of years for man's instincts to develop. It will take millions more for them to even vary. A communicator must be concerned with unchanging man. So, of course, in this whole era of where we're talking about millennials and digital disruption, I think this is such a valuable truth to think about these things that are unchanging is as important as the things that are changing, especially now in these times of there is a lot of crisis going on and I see a lot of talk about how society will change and it will definitely change on a certain level. But as humans, there are some things that are beneath that surface that are will never change or at least not in the, in the time of, let's say, 10 years or 100 years even. So I think that's really important. And this is a really good book if you want, like a fun, light read, but still have some insight into what cliches are in this industry. And then uh, final one, 
Building Brand Experiences by Darren Coleman had also been on the podcast. I try to interview everyone that writes a book that I find interesting. So this is definitely one of them. And this is more like if we look at the stack, this is probably the most practical book of all of them because it's really more about building brand experiences. And that's really interesting to me because I think brand experience is something we really need to focus on because it's again about differentiating on that more unconscious level of like understanding what a consumer expects, what its needs are. And building the right brand experience is for me the right solution to do that. And so this is, of course, a really interesting book that talks about like how to define this whole brand experience and not just, let's say, the brand identity, but the brand experience. For me, that's the next step after brand strategy. It's building an experience. And as I've said before, I think strategy is only worth as much as the execution that comes after it. So I think the perfect way to end a video with books on brand strategy is a, a book on brand experience. Let me read a small piece. Cast your mind back five years and think about how many traditional and digital media channels existed. Now add social media and mobile into the mix. The number of potential brand touch points is increasing rapidly and shows no signs of relenting. Brands that understand how to build brand experiences embrace such change and thrive. So in this changing landscape in terms of like channels and touch points, having a clear definition of what your brand experience is about might, might make you that brand that is consistently distinctive, as Jenny uh, so importantly talks about and might make you a brand that's easily communicated. And it's also really important, of course, that you are internally aligned. Voila, I think these are some of the most important books to read on brand strategy, and especially about in understanding like how markets really work and how categories work, and not just in the classical sense of differentiating a brand. Behind me, you can see there's a lot more books I can talk about. And I think I'm going to do a follow up with books that are more closely related to branding. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was interesting. And uh, if you want to find the books there below in the comments uh, or in the sorry, in the video description. And there is a link to the to my website where you can easily get links to Amazon if you want to buy them directly. Take care. Bye bye.